Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my little balcony garden year 2 recap. You might know from a previous video that I no longer live in Würzburg and that my balcony garden is long gone now. So this video is very special as it shows the last season I had with my wonderful little garden in my old flat. I hope you enjoy this video. In April many trees were already in bloom when suddenly snow hit us. Luckily that didn't last long and I kicked off this new season with a visit to the garden center and bought a lot of strawberry plants and others. I was really excited to start all over again and I decided that the raised bed on the right of my balcony would be dedicated to a lot of strawberries. Of course I prepared the raised bed first by adding bokashi to the soil to provide new nutrients for the coming season. I kept the soil in there from last year and just topped it off with new soil. Then I added new strawberry plants among a few of my older plants I had kept in a window box before. In the garden center I had also purchased a pot of organic parsley which I also transferred to this raised bed. Parsley is considered a good or neutral neighbor for strawberries. It's important to check which plants tolerate each other or even thrive next to each other and which don't. Afterwards, I could also sow the first seeds. I planted different varieties of tomatoes, eggplant, chilies and pumpkin and I couldn't wait until they would grow into beautiful plants. I get my seeds from different places. I bought some at the supermarket or other shops. I bought some from an organic seeds distributor, which is definitely my favorite, but also more pricey. And I'm also looking for seed in private Facebook groups, which are dedicated to people trading seeding material grown from their own plants and thus avoiding big companies and their often unfair regulations. My collection has grown quite a bit now and I will definitely show you my seed collection in the coming gardening videos. A few weeks earlier I had already planted a lot of salads and could now bring them outside to the raised bed on the left. The freshly sowed seeds I put on my windowsill for lots of light. Soon the sunny days got longer and my balcony started to slowly feel like my garden again. Do you remember the Lunaria annua plant from last year? It only blooms in the second year and I was so thrilled to see the blossoms coming up because I knew they would turn into beautiful silvery seed pots and would look amazing once dried. Something new that moved into the balcony garden was this olive tree I got for a good price. Here you can see a wild mix of flowers I tossed into this metal pot. I learned that you should cut the first flowers of the strawberry plants to encourage the plant to grow stronger and bigger first. Sadly I also lost a few plants because I forgot to water them. But these were only salad seedlings, so it's not super bad. Something I love to do and watch were time lapses of seedlings during the day. Isn't it so satisfying to look at? Another thing that happened frequently throughout the season was repotting plants, of course. Here I am repotting my little banana plant into a bigger terracotta pot. And afterwards, a climbing strawberry variety. As the time progressed, I could sow more and more seeds. This time, bunny tail grass, which became one of my faves, cosmos and cucumelon. Okay, I think they're all my faves. This year I made sure to tag everything properly. Yeah. 
Very soon, the next batch of seedlings could move outside in the beginning of May. Not to spoil the mood already, but sadly, in 2022 we had a massive heat wave and maybe the quality of the seedlings and soil etc. wasn't too good. So a lot of plants either died in the heat or didn't grow a lot or didn't bear any fruit or flowers. It's okay for me though, as gardening is more about the act of doing it and learning a ton every year and constantly improving. So although it might be annoying sometimes, I'm still grateful for every opportunity to learn and do better in the next season. I also think it's a little more difficult to grow a beautiful thriving garden on a balcony with limited space as opposed to a real garden with more space and proper soil. But the latter will come true one day for me, I know it. And in the meantime, I will do my best to master the balcony garden. I transplanted the carrot seedlings to one of the raised beds in between salads and bok choy, which always did very well for me, so that's a massive win. I even transplanted the bunny tail grass to a terracotta pot and couldn't wait to see it grow and produce the cute fluffy tips. Then I sowed some more of it in this concrete urn as I hoped it would look great once it grew in. I remember this day vividly. I got so much done and repotted so many seedlings in their own plastic pots. It was such a beautiful day. Look at them in my cold frame cabinet. As I already mentioned, I was really lucky with my salads and bok choy and could harvest them regularly. Somehow the calendula survived the winter and produced so many blooms that year. And look at the Lunaria annua and the first seed pods that appeared. The lupin I planted in the raised bed on the right also pushed out its first blossom. In general, everything grew so well in May and the blueberry also showed its first blooms. When I look at this footage now, it makes me almost tear up because this little garden meant so much to me and every time I looked at it or stepped outside, it made me feel so peaceful and accomplished. I know I will build a new balcony garden this year in Hamburg, but I miss my old one dearly. I even loved watching it during rain and thunderstorms just as much as during a beautiful sunset.
Here you see me putting the pumpkin plant into the raised bed on the left. I have to admit, plants of the squash family didn't do well on my balcony at all. It might be because of the limited space or the placement or the soil or everything combined, but it always became a tragedy once the hot summer days came. So I don't know if I will try again in Hamburg this year. I just need you to stay here with me in the corner. Look at this big bok choy. I cooked a delicious meal with it, which you can see in part 7 of the My Little Balcony Garden series. Even just your voice, if it's you, then I discovered that my blueberry plant was suffering from chlorosis, which is a deficiency in iron. You can spot it when the leaves look like this, so I went to the garden center to buy a treatment for that. And, as you will see later, that worked perfectly. I think the reason for this might have been build up in the soil because of our very hot water, which kept the plant from getting all the nutrients it needs. I made sure to add a bit of citric acid into my watering can to neutralize the hot water a bit. When an angel starts to build. Look how much the strawberry plants have grown, and now they're pushing out even more blossoms. Here I'm transplanting a tomato plant into this elevated metal pot along with a few seedlings of red basil. Again, I think the plant didn't have enough nutrients in the soil and maybe the pot was too small because it didn't grow up into a strong and healthy plant sadly. Lesson learned I guess. Soon it was time to make room for new things in this raised bed, so I took out the remaining bok choy, which slowly started to go into blossom anyways, and also trimmed the calendula back as it was taking over. I won't feel dizzy if you're here with me. Then I planted the seedlings of the cucumelon there against this metal climbing support I put into the raised bed soil. The eggplants were another problem child, as they didn't grow a ton and never even produced a single flower, even though they were marked as a smaller and bushier plant suitable for balconies. Tomatoes could move in here as well, and it maybe was just too many plants in a small space, so it was probably too many heavy feeders in there, and the weakest didn't make it. The tomato plants were definitely the winners. Look at this little basket full of salad, bok choy, herbs and edible flowers. I was so happy. This evening I also remember dearly. Another very peaceful moment I will keep in my heart forever. This window box was filled with pansies in spring, but now the blooms were fading, so it was time to replace them with new plants the insects and bees loved. And here's the first fruit and the tomatoes. So exciting! As the lupin formed seed pods, the blueberry plant had developed the first green berries, which would slowly turn into a deep blue.
by the end of June, my balcony garden looked like this. As you can see, the chlorosis treatment worked great. It wasn't much, but three tiny carrots were taken from the raised bed on the left. The variety was a small one called Paris Market and they tasted quite good. I regularly fertilized everything with Bokashi tea mixed into water, but I also spread warm castings on top of the soil around the plants every now and then, as I had learned from the previous year that my plants probably didn't get enough nutrients throughout the season. I mentioned it before, repots were done regularly once a plant outgrew its pot. I know it's not ideal, but I wanted to give this tomato plant a bigger home. I had some birch bark lying around, which I put on top of the soil to act as a mulch and prevent water loss. The flowers in this pot had long gone, so it was time to take them out and plant something else in there. I decided it would be perfect for more cucamelon plants, which could climb on bamboo sticks I added in there as well. I also had some eggplant seedlings left I didn't want to toss, so I put them in there as well. Needless to say, here as well the eggplants didn't do well. However, the cucamelons loved it there, much more as opposed to the raised bed. Maybe because it was a little more shaded over there. This year, my blueberry plant didn't produce as many berries as last year, but that's okay, it had to deal with chlorosis this season and we can't always perform our best. The berries I could harvest were very good though. It was now almost the end of July and the weather became hotter every day. So I made sure to set up some dishes with water for the insects, which I filled up almost every day and cleaned regularly, of course. Now the plants still look good and were thriving, but soon they had to deal with the heat and sunburns and leaves drying to a crisp, sadly. When it wasn't super hot, I could enjoy my dinner on the balcony in the evenings, and I swear it tasted better with all my plants surrounding me. Here I cut off the sunflowers and their heads to dry and cleaned this raised bed a little further. Two years ago I received a cutting of a red currant plant and it did well until this summer when it completely died on me, even after I cut it back several times. Me, 
the heat and the lack of nutrients probably was too much. The blueberry also suffered from sunburns on its leaves and for a couple of days when it was scorching hot, I even put up huge pieces of cloth over my balcony to reduce the harsh sunlight a bit. I didn't film it and it looked particularly funny from the outside, but I think it really helped to prevent the worst. We had up to 40 degrees Celsius on some days and even my little cactus began to look sad. The bunny tail grass in a concrete urn looks okay, but very small. Many calendula flowers have transformed into seeds, which I took off to save for the next year. Here's an update on the pumpkin plant, which produced many male flowers. And if there was a female flower, that one would quickly rot for whatever reason. The male flowers would also fall off and the plant didn't look too good at all, as I mentioned before. Due to apartment hunting in Hamburg and the amount of photo jobs I had in August, I didn't film anything on my balcony garden that month and neglected it a little bit. After all, it would soon be time to say goodbye. The cucumelon was thriving in a spot next to the cold frame cabinet and it made me so sad that I had to cut it down due to the move very soon. I was sure it would have produced a lot of fruit. My best performing plants were obviously my tomatoes. They also hadn't disappointed me the year before and I was proud to be able to harvest tomatoes every now and then. What I learned this season was that my plants need more room for their own, to grow into healthy and strong ones. Most of them hate the hard water and fertilizing regularly is key as well as setting up the rice beds with enough nutrients from the beginning. I might have put too little Bokashi in there from the start. Moreover, the heat weakened many plants on top of that, so a big sunshade would have been beneficial, I think. What came in the end was the move and my balcony looking sad and empty. But I will continue this journey now that I'm living in Hamburg and I'm excited to start a new season and learn lots of new things. Especially here, where the climate will be a little different. Thank you all so much for watching and accompanying me on my gardening journey. I hope you liked this video and are as thrilled as I am for the next chapter. See you in my next video. Take care and goodbye.